I came to Beijing to strengthen high-level channels of communication, to make clear our positions and intentions in areas of disagreement, and to explore areas where we might work together when our interests align on shared transnational challenges. And we did all of that. Here in Beijing, I had an important conversation with President Xi Jinping. And I had candid, substantive, and constructive discussions with my counterparts, Director Wang Yi and State Councilor Chen Gong. I appreciate the hospitality extended by our hosts. In every meeting, I stress that direct engagement and sustained communication at senior levels is the best way to responsibly manage our differences and ensure that competition does not veer into conflict. And I heard the same from my Chinese counterparts. We both agree on the need to stabilize our relationship. During those meetings, we had a robust conversation about regional and global challenges. That includes Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. I reiterated that we would welcome China playing a constructive role, along with other nations, to work toward a just peace based on the principles of the United Nations Charter. We also spoke about North Korea's increasingly reckless actions and rhetoric. All members of the international community have an interest in encouraging the DPRK to act responsibly, to stop launching missiles, to start engaging on its nuclear program. China is in a unique position to press Pyongyang to engage in dialogue and to end its dangerous behavior. I raised U.S. concerns, shared by a growing number of countries, about the PRC's provocative actions in the Taiwan Strait, as well as in the South and East China Seas. On Taiwan, I reiterated the longstanding U.S. One China policy. Uh, that policy has not changed. It's guided by the Taiwan Relations Act, the three joint communiques, the six assurances. We do not support Taiwan independence. We remain opposed to any unilateral changes to the status quo by either side. We continue to expect the peaceful resolution of cross-strait differences. We remain committed to meeting our responsibilities under the Taiwan Relations Act, including making sure that Taiwan has the ability to defend itself. We exchange views on our respective economic policies, including our concerns about China's unfair treatment of U.S. companies. During my meeting today with U.S. business leaders, who are operating in China, I heard about the problems that U.S. businesses are facing, including recent punitive actions against American firms. I made clear that we'll continue to take targeted actions that are necessary to protect U.S. national security. In my meetings, I also discussed human rights. The United States and the international community remain deeply concerned about PRC human rights violations, including in Xinjiang, in Tibet, in Hong Kong. I also specifically raised wrongfully detained U.S. citizens, and those facing exit bans. There is no higher priority for me than the safety and well-being of U.S. citizens overseas, and I'll continue to work intensively to secure their release and their safe return home. We have no illusions about the challenges of managing this relationship. There are many issues on which we profoundly, even vehemently, disagree we will always take the best course of action to advance the interests of the American people. But the United States has a long history of successfully managing complicated, consequential relationships through diplomacy. It's the responsibility of both countries to find a path forward, and it's in both our interests and the interests of the world that we do so.